We all know the importance of how we represent ourselves. The things we say and the things we do influence the people around us. It's all about the message we are sending, including the things that we wear. Christians can be more aware of the messages we bring to others in their clothing with Covenant Press. Covenant Press is a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory store that is fearfully and wonderfully made. If you want to wear the message of Christ and Christianity, then go to their website at covenant-press.com. That's www.covenant hyphen press.com. For the next 24 hours, you will get 25% off the purchase of $50 or more using the discount code GROWTH at checkout. Sign up and become a member to receive points for future purchases. Again, that's covenant hyphen press.com. www covenant-press.com to get 25% off your purchase of $50 or more using discount code GROWTH at checkout. Tell your friends and family about covenant-press.com so we can all share the message. Welcome to Laquita's Toolbox where we deliver relevant content in the form of tools that empower entrepreneurs to elevate personally and professionally. Good is only good until greater is envisioned. You know there's another level in you. Here we discuss the tools to get you there. Lean in as Laquita and her guests present you with strategies and insight for unlocking your full potential to realize your boldest dream. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another great episode of Laquita's Toolbox. I am your host, Laquita Monley, and I'm really excited about today's episode. Uh, mostly because today's episode, uh, the conversation that we're going to have today with Mr. Andy McDowell, it's close to home for me, but we'll get into how all of this worked out in just a minute. So what I'd like to do right now is, again, thank you so much, Andy, for joining us here today for Laquita's Toolbox. Super excited to have you. Been anticipating this conversation for a while. So, sir, have, tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. So I'm currently a life leadership and small business coach in the Atlanta area. But prior to that, I've had an entrepreneurial journey where I've lived, if you will, or worked in different forms of entrepreneurship. So I start off as an employee uh, working for two entrepreneurial companies before one of them was uh, purchased and brought into a very large corporation called the Boeing Company, uh, where I spent 22 years working my way up the leadership chain to position at the very bottom of the executive chain. But then unfortunately, the 737 MAX crisis uh, caused a layoff for myself as well as thousands of other employees. But it afforded me the opportunity to be an entrepreneur within a giant corporation because I was asked to start a business from school scratch when we got purchased by Boeing. And now I'm a solo entrepreneur doing my own thing right before pandemic started, trying to help people um, navigate through through those channels, both in their leadership skills as well as their business skills. Awesome. That's a pretty amazing story. I don't think in the short time that I've been doing this podcast that I can honestly recall an entrepreneur getting their start while working within a major corporation. So mm -hmm. that's pretty interesting. <laughs> that is pretty interesting of how all of that started. But with that, having had your start in that way, it brings me to the actual the topic of conversation today. You had a pretty unique perspective while being an employee, but yet at being asked to start a company from scratch from within that position, it probably gave you some very unique insight into the value that we should have as leaders and around this topic. And that's the leadership of others, starting with leading yourself, you know, the how did, did that role have a major impact on how you were able to see the necessities of that? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm a human being and I'm not perfect. So I had times where I fell off the horse and had to get <laughs> back on it again through my 22 years with the company. 
it was my first opportunity to truly lead a team of some magnitude in terms of personnel numbers as the business grew over the 22 years. But just because I was in a corporation, I still had to go out and find the resources. Yes, Boeing had marketing resources, finance resources, uh, and the like. So I didn't necessarily have to go outside the company to go find it, but I had to go find it. And talk about what the mission of our new business was, what its goals were, where its why was, why was Boeing wanting to get into this business and convince people to support my business in those various areas. And then I had, you know, like a conductor of an orchestra, I had to, I had to conduct everything around those resources, even though they were spread around the world to make my business successful within the large corporation. So came out of high school and college in my early 20s were very with self-esteem issues where I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. I wasn't an extrovert by any means. And I had to go out and get the, the therapy and the work and read a bunch of self-help books and everything to get myself to a position uh, where I could confidently lead other people and confidently build a business. And I saw that need as I was getting knee deep into trying to build a business importance of it. And what eventually led to my firm belief that we le- learn how to lead others by first leading, learning to lead ourselves. That's- that's really good. I I couldn't agree more. Self leadership is necessary. It really, when you think about it, really simple. If I cannot lead myself, how can I lead others? So, mm-hmm. if you could break that down for for our listeners. Uh, those who perhaps have never thought about it in that manner. What is something that our listeners can do to do like a self-leadership assessment on themselves so that they can begin to have a personal growth journey? Well, it really starts with a good self-assessment. Where do you feel like you are in life? How good are you at making decisions? How good are you at speaking in front of others? How good are you at deciphering or learning maybe technical skills, using using the computer to do things? Or Maybe business you're trying to lead, like the one I was in Boeing, was very technical issues. So how good are you at being curious and asking the right questions to elicit information that's going to help you to make um, decisions? How empathetic are you? Can you sit down across the table from somebody that's on your team and um, have an open, honest, safe conversation about where they're at? You learn that skill by doing that with yourself. So you're stepping outside yourself and having an empathetic conversation with yourself that's honest and saying, this is what I feel like my strengths are. And this is what I feel like my weaknesses are. And how can I strengthen my strengths even more? And how can I build up my weaknesses such that um, they may not necessarily be a strength, but they may be less of a weakness for yourself. Just like a business is trying to do some self-assessment where they are in the marketplace and do some self-reflection with strategy of where they are in the marketplace, you have to have that honest conversation with yourself about where you truly think. And if if you don't think you can do that assessment, then go ask others. Tell me what you think. What do you see? Hold hold the mirror up to me. And, and how am I with, do I feel, do you think I'm a confident person? Do you think I'm okay talking in front of others? Do I engage with people when I meet them for the first time? You know, there's a lot of questions you can ask that you can get open, honest feedback from those that you trust that are in your inner circle and get some honest answers. That helps you to get your starting point. Uh, after that, it's just deciding where do I want to be? Who do I want to be in this world? How do I want to be? You know, the key word here is be. How do you want to be uh, in this world? And then that's going to set forth what you need to do in this world to get your be to be where you want it to be. You know, as, as you were reviewing some of those great questions to ask yourself, the thing that came to mind to me was a SWOT analysis. Can we give ourselves A SWOT analysis, the way we would give our organization and what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are your opportunities, what are your threats? And at the same time, because even within the organization and you're looking at SWOT analysis, each department has one and all of the departments turn in one, you get to look at the total business. So am I feeling like I can be completely honest? with giving myself a SWOT analysis. And if not, those in my inner circle, in my no like and trust circle, have them to perform a SWOT analysis and give it to me about me. And that should give me some really honest starting points um, with helping to build myself in the area of self-leadership. That is really, really good. So uh, we're thinking about, when we're talking about can, self-leadership. Can, can, I, can I add a comment to that point? Okay. Because yeah. You're in Texas, I'm in Atlanta, we're on the same frequency because that's the tool I use with my clients, it, but with a slight adjustment. So instead of opportunities, threats, I change it to love and fear. 
All right. All right. So where we have opportunities in life is where we have our loves, our passions, what brings joy and happiness to our heart, which is the ultimate goal. And then fear, where you have fears in life, where you can have disruptions or blockages that won't allow you to go after the type of life that you want or you think you need to have uh, for joy and happiness and success to show up in your life. And so that's the exact tool that I use. Uh, business strategy is my strength to help people f- figure out where they are, what that position is. It's like SWAT in business is used. Where are you in the marketplace? Uh, it's a tool with slight modification you, you can use for where are you in life. You use that tool and you switch it up just just a little bit. Make it more life-centric as opposed to business-centric. Business-centric. That's real good. I like that. I like that. So, for instance, let's say we, you had a client or a potential client and you're doing an intake and the, and the client says, I don't think I'm a leader. I don't think that I have leadership capabilities, but I just want to be a better or more confident individual. Mm-hmm. What is something that you would say to that person to get them to the place to understand that you are a leader? Like, we each of us has leadership capabilities within us. And how would you start out with helping that individual to understand they need to be built up from the inside out? Well, I would start off the conversation to ask them, what is your definition of leadership? You know, most people think leadership is, well, I got to have a title. Uh, I got to have a corner office. I got to have a salary and those type of things. The reality is we're all leaders. The very least you're a leader of your life. And, and leadership is more about influence than it is command and control or responsibility, accountability. I mean, those are important things, but the reality is I use the definition of leadership as you're able to move some kind of organization, whether it's an organization of one and yourself to an organization of multiple people from position A to position B with the notion that position B is a better for that period of time. Position B is a better place for everyone that's in the organization. And so if we can start with that definition, that's more about influence. Then we can start having a conversation about what your strengths and weaknesses are and how they benefit or don't benefit your ability to be a leader of yourself and a leader of others. I love that definition there about our ability to influence. So, and when, again, we're still having the conversation about the importance of being able to lead ourselves, to set ourselves up to be better leaders of other people. A leader being an individual is one that has, you're either going to positively influence people or you're going to negatively influence Mm -hmm. people. Our mindset, how important is that within self-leadership? The importance of our mindset there, because the first person that we influence is ourselves, whether we realize it or not, in a negative or a positive way. Can you speak to us a little bit about that important piece of self-leadership with your mindset and how we, are, we have to positively influence ourselves forward every day? Yeah, absolutely. It's If we first talk about being a leader of others and you're trying to influence them, then you're going to do it with conversation, particularly to explain the why the why of what we're doing. So if we put together a strategy for business and it's hopefully if we execute effectively on that, we're going to move the organization to position B, right? The first question you got to answer is, well, why do we want to be in position B? Why is position B a better place for the organization? Because I need some buy-in. I need some logic behind it as to why is position B going to be a better spot for us? And if you can convince or influence me of that first, then I'm more likely to engage and be a participant in this process that you're asking me to be in, to move the organization to position B. If you take that whole notion and turn around on ourselves in terms of self-leadership, you sort of have to step out of yourself and have that conversation, have that mindset of the same thing, right? So you have to answer the question for yourself. I think I want to go here in my life. I want to be at this spot in the future. Okay, why? Hmm. You're having a little mindset or conversation with yourself. It's like, why? Why is that a better better place for myself? Does it bring physical and emotional safety? Does it bring joy and happiness uh, to my life? Because I would be in a position to have the freedom to do whatever I want in these areas because I know I enjoy those things and therefore joy and happiness is going to be part of my life and spirit or or is it not? Hmm. You know, So you have to ask those questions first to get to this is where I want to be. And I've answered the question for myself, why do I want to be there? Then after that, it's all about mindset. It's about focus. It's mindset. It's about the continual conversation in my head uh, that says, A, I'm worthy of that. B, I want that for myself. C, I'm going to be focused to get myself there. And D, I'm going to be introspective to figure out what I need to do and grow 
and what areas to get myself to that position. So in a lot of my coaching, I like to highlight to my clients how much overlap there is between business and life. Yes. And how, how the two are almost interchangeable. So mm -hmm. you can have a business strategic kind of conversation <laughs> with yourself to get yourself motivated and answer these questions about if I'm going to be the CEO of my life and be in charge yes. and create, create the life that I want for myself, then I have to have these type of conversations in my head and influence myself to stay focused with the growth mindset and go after that working and staying focused to, to get to that point of freedom in your life, to enjoy what you enjoy and allow the truth of who you are to come out and for the world to see. Well, see, I could not agree more, you know, with, with speaking with our, my clients or potential clients. A lot of times I've, I've found that when a person, not all the time, but a large majority of the time, when a person wants business coaching, what they actually need is personal development. Mm -hmm. But yeah, actually, usually an, an issue within the business is a symptom of something that's going it's a on in here. Exactly. Except going on in here. Yeah, and it's, that's completely internal to the business leader or the organizational leader, you know, wherever you are in that structure. Because when I am confident of who I am and I'm confident of my why as to why I, why I started this business or why I partnered with this organization, and that why is in alignment with the core values of who I am, mm -hmm. then it becomes easier for me to then, or the individual to then put together a success roadmap for for yourself personally or for the organization, because the organization should fit in the middle of your why. Like the organization mm -hmm. that you're leading should be a part of your why, whether it's a tool that you're using, a conduit or whatever the case may be, it should fit in that why. And that organization, if it's not your own organization, the the values and the mission and vision of that organization should in some way align with your core values as a person, uh, which will help to drive the success factor so that you're not at war mentally and emotionally because it's the polar opposite of who you are. Yeah, ab absolutely. So I'm, I'm a big Simon Sinek fan with his golden circle. You know, the why, how, what, and I use yeah. it all the time in my, in my coaching as a model. And that's why why is in the center because the, the how and the what support the why. The why, and yes. It, whether you're starting a business and you're looking at the business itself or you're looking at yourself, you have to start with the why. Mm -hmm. And I, I also like to tell my clients, once you think you have your why, how, what, a good test is start at the what and then ask yourself if this all appropriate fits you should be able to ask the question well these are the things the what's that i want to do okay why because they reflect how i want to live how how i want to live and be yes. in this world which is your culture and your values mm -hmm. and then okay well, why do you want to have that culture and values why because it serves the why of my life mm -hmm. So it's a good litmus test to use after you've sort of filled out the three squares, so to speak, for yourself is to keep asking why. And if you have a hard time with the argument of getting yourself in the what to the how by asking why and from the how to the why by asking why, then you know you've got some more work and you probably need to take an eraser and change a few things up until you feel comfortable that you've effectively addressed those two questions. Absolutely. And, and again, I couldn't agree more. It starts, it's a personal internal thing that we have to start there. And it's, you know, I like to tell my clients, this is like a living, breathing document. Like you're a walking. It is. Breathing. It's not set in stone as you no. go through life. It's going to slightly <laughs> change. Yeah. Certainly the how and the what will, the why it, may fluctuate a little bit. But... A little bit. You may build on top of it, other things. Mm -hmm. So like, just for instance, just who I am today. Quite honestly, it's not the person I was last year. Definitely mm -hmm. not the person I was five years ago or 10 years ago. Now, the why behind why I'm an entrepreneur, at the core of that is my family and my faith. Now, mm -hmm. things have changed along the way. You know, my children are adults now. Now I have grandchildren. So that's an additional thing to my why, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, you, you just added the word grand in front of a word. I mean, yeah, just exactly. You just, you know, some little bits will change, right? Right, right. But my why is pretty solid. But the things, the my who, 
my what my how has changed mm -hmm. a little bit, especially in terms of what I deem success to look like, right? Success for me as a 21 year old full of energy and ego and all that good stuff. Yes. Is not what success looks like for me today. Even what success looks like for me as a mom raising help uh, helping to raise five kids, my why is still the same. I'm doing what I'm doing because I want to build value for my family. Mm -hmm. Now, what that value means is not necessarily the same. You know, what that value would have meant to me at age 25 and 21, oh, I want to make sure my family for the next seven, 10 generations, um, their wealth is sustainable. Not that I don't like, not that that's not a goal. That's still right. a goal. Not a, but it's no longer at the high priority. Right now, my high priority is, you know what? There's a Monarch Festival in the neighboring county. Let's take the grandkids to the Monarch Festival. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to think about, can we afford that? Or can I fit that in my schedule? Oh, no, it's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. I may move an appointment, but we're going to the Monarch Festival, the Monarch Butterfly Festival with the grandkids because I'm camera ready. I want to see their reaction to these butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> my why, you know, my family yeah. is still my why, but a lot of things shift and change. And I think that sometimes we fight that change. We don't embrace it. We become so tunnel focused on what we think it should be that we don't allow it to grow and blossom and develop because my wife is still my family. Now, how I achieve what success looks like for them today is a little bit different than it was at 21, 25, 35, but they're still at the center of why I do what I do. It's just my values have changed on what is important, what I'm willing to sacrifice versus what I'm not willing to sacrifice in order to achieve a goal. But when, when I sit down with a client for the first time, I say, I'm a coach. I'm not, I'm not a consultant. I'm not handing right. you the answers, right? <laughs> so I'm here, here to try and teach you some tools and skills you can use throughout your life to keep you on your journey. Like the little SWOT type analysis that here's a tool to help you every year. And I do this for myself between Christmas and New Year's. I take two or three hours with my cups of coffee and sit down and review, you know, my tools, my documents for where I'm trying to go with my life to see if any tweaks or adjustments need to be made based off of what I learned this past year about myself, about the world, about those that I surround myself with, et cetera. But I, I still use the same tools. Um, but life's a journey and you're in a different spot in the journey. And part of the journey might be through a desert and part of the journey might be through the forest and part of the uh, journey might be at the beach, you know, so to speak of life. And because of that, you need to keep looking at these things uh, to tweak your strategy for the coming year or the next five years or whatever it may be to get you to the place where your journey is full of joy and happiness yes. throughout. So it's not a destination. It's a journey. journey. And how can I get myself to a place that as I'm going along the journey, I'm going to be this way in the world. And if I be this way in the world, joy and happiness will always surround me, even though the path's going to have twists and turns and go through the deserts and the forests and so forth of life. And that's the biggest life hack, if you will, you can have for yourself is, yes. is to have these tools at, this, at, your, at your disposal, to have the right mindset, mm -hmm. to be introspective and honest with yourself. And you stand a much larger chance of always having, being surrounded by joy and happiness in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's definitely, it's all about the journey. It's, it's, it's all about the journey and our ability to see it and enjoy it and not be so rigid about it that to the point where we miss the joy in the journey. And being present in the moment. Yes. Yes. Otherwise you're going to miss those little things, you know, that little smile on the grandkid or the uh, twinkle in their eye or watching them, uh, you know, at a play chasing their dream or yes. all those type things. You, you have to be present in the moment and paying attention and say, my focus is entirely right here. And just to witness it is going to bring mm -hmm. me tremendous joy and happiness. Absolutely. That's the part where self-leadership is 
so necessary because when we're strong leaders of ourselves, I believe that that is the base of the foundation of being able to own those moments. Because mm -hmm. if I'm a strong leader of myself, then that really means I understand who I am. I understand my purpose and I understand what I need to do on this journey called life. Right. But if I don't, then I'll, I'll continue to allow outside situations, circumstances, and unfortunately other people's opinions to kind of map out my journey. And I won't be able to enjoy the time that I get to have with my grandkids, my kids, mm -hmm. friends, family. You know, you won't get to enjoy that because outside influences and the pressure. Fear. Yes, fear won't. It, it, it all boils like, down to fear. Fear of somebody else's opinion. Fear of yes. not having enough money. Fear of having to have a social media post every hour. I mean, you're distracted. Your brain is over. <laughs> It is five miles away when you're sitting mm -hmm. there trying to enjoy your grandchild being in the school play or whatever, and your your brain is five miles away. Five miles you, away. You got so many fears of something that's going on in your life that you can't can't be in a state of love and a state of present be being and just enjoy the moment. You don't have that freedom because you've allowed fear to be such a distraction in um, in your life. In your life, you're, you're so right. With, with building foundations within ourselves and being um, solid and strong and, and as it re relates to our, our emotional intelligence, our self-leadership skills, that then in turn allows us to be more effective as we're leading others because now I can kind of be like, I'm, I can't tell you what to do as the leader within the organization, mm -hmm. like business wise, yes. But when you're trying to cultivate a culture within your business where it's a safe space for those mm -hmm. who partner with you, the majority of what you do as a leader actually has nothing to do with business. People, if you, if we've hired someone on to do a job, they're pretty capable of doing that job with some guidance. Not everyone mm -hmm. needs micromanagement, but usually what I found to happen is maybe I'm good technically at my job, but other outside things are impacting me as an employee. And so maybe now that employee needs me to be able to recognize that, be sensitive to it and help them not that you become that employee's friend or that counselor or that coach, but understanding, okay, life happens. And how can we cultivate a culture within our company to let our staff know that, hey, we understand that life happens. We want to support you however we can. Mm -hmm. In that, because at the end of the day, if you're doing great, then you're doing great work and then my company is doing great. But if I'm not a really good leader of myself and I, I'm not emotionally intelligent and I can't discern those things about myself, much less my team, that creates a toxic environment. I would often tell those that I mentored that were in management within Boeing is that don't be afraid to hire smarter people than yourself. Yes. Because at the end of the day, the main thing you're getting judged on is getting results. Yes. If that the business hopes and expects from your team. So how are you creating an environment that's going to allow full the full um, impact, if you will, of a yeah. person's creativity, skills, and talents for their contribution to come to bear to get the results for your team that the company is looking for? And that's not micromanagement. That's knowing who the person is, knowing their why in life, knowing their strengths and weaknesses, you know, Hopefully you're recognizing we're going down the same conversation we just had 10 minutes ago, right? <laughs> that you're creating, right. you're creating, you're knowing your people and you're creating this, like you said, safe, emotionally safe and encouraging environment to bring the best out of your people, to allow them the freedom to be creative mm -hmm. in what you're asking them to do. Uh, like you said, a little bit of guidance with a vision, got to have a vision, but also, uh, you know, a, a little bit of guidance on your thoughts on the best way to achieve the results but still giving them the freedom to play around a little bit with that and maybe tweak it that's going to allow them to deliver the results that you're hoping from them that's going to be a contributor to the team overall achieving overall. their goals and results so how we, we as human beings want to be seen and we want to be part of something that's bigger than ourselves yes so how are you seeing your employees Mm -hmm. How are you understanding them and how are you being empathetic with the example that you brought up at the times that they just can't be there a hundred percent, but it's not forever. It's a short period of time. Well, okay. 
you know, go do what you need to go do that mm -hmm. then enables you to come back with a sense of freedom and a sense of safety and a sense of, okay, now I'm present, I'm back at work and I'm charging the head just like I did before because I was able to take care of something personal and I had the backing of my boss, my supervisor behind that uh, because of the culture and the way that they lead from that standpoint. So, you know, number one reason an employee leaves a company is because of their relationship with their supervisor. Yes. Has nothing to do with oh, money. I mean, no. sometimes maybe, but most times. Sometimes it's money, nothing, but it's not, it's not the most not popular, the major reason. if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not the major reason. <laughs> right, right. It, it has everything to do with relationship and whether or not they feel valued. You know, I think probably many of us has a story where we left a company or a position. Well, I know I did. I left a company and took about a $20,000 a year pay cut to go to a different company, but I left because I was not happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. at the company that was paying me more and had better benefits, but I flourished and did amazingly at the smaller company, which mm -hmm. had a really good impact on my career overall moving forward from that point. But it's all about people being valued. People, like you said, you by and large, people want to be a part of something that's bigger and greater than themselves and where they feel that they matter. And that's why I need my company generate your value because it applies to all areas of one's life, right? So in the relationship between you as the as the leader or supervisor with your team, what kind of value are you delivering to your team and how is it perceived, right? You may think you may be delivering value, but your team doesn't see that way because they don't value what you're offering. So right. how well are you understanding the team that's working for you and whether or not you truly are generating value to them that they want to get up at 530 in the morning and as soon as their feet hit the floor, they can't wait to get into work, you know, hop in the shower, deal with the 30 minute difficult commute and show up at your office and be in this terrific environment and just let's go team what are we doing you know what's on the, right. the agenda for today or or is it a slog because it's like mm -hmm. oh here i go 30 minutes of commute and i get to sit for eight hours in a in a room that's got a micromanager who's constantly looking over my shoulder and he's critiquing everything that i do and uh, uh, you know Who is that bringing joy and happiness in their life no so not at all stick around very long no no so not at all <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. You know, I think, what are we currently calling it? The great exodus or something like that? The number the great of great resignation. Yes, the great, the great resignation. resignation. It amazes me that so many people or analysts or whoever these people are that are on these news channel find that amazing. How are you finding that amazing? <laughs> Like, have you not been working in some of these situations for the past? I don't no, know. I just, I like, just think people finally got the push to yeah. do something about it. It's always exactly. been there, yeah. but they were just, they were unwilling to make a, a change in their life. And then they, you know, when people ask me the great resignation, the, my opinion on it is that we, we as a world, mm -hmm. so when, when do people typically make major changes in their life, right? I'm 42 years old. And I just had a heart attack. You know, I thought I had another 40, 40 years, 50 years left in my life. And all of a sudden I was that close to, you know, being six feet in the ground mm -hmm. and I'm not really living my dream and I want to go chase my dream. And there may not be a tomorrow because I was emotionally in a spot where I didn't think there was a tomorrow. And um, so I'm going to make that change and go chase my dreams. Well, with a big pandemic, the world had that moment, right? So either either you yourself time. got COVID and got in a very serious way or... Uh, somebody lives in your household did or or somebody in your family did or it got close to home even if it wasn't you that mm -hmm. had the major health scare that a lot of people were facing that situation it's like life is too short and this pandemic came out of nowhere and you never know when another one might show up so i'm really going to go after and chase my dreams and get a a better environment and have joint happiness in my life. And so we're seeing it in a much grander scale than the individual, individual hand, uh, handful of people in a given city that might face it in a particular we kind of standpoint. They want something more out of business and it's a big wake up call for business to adjust the, their cultures and the way they do things. I agree. It's everyone around the world had that defining moment, those mm -hmm. defining moments simultaneously and it what i'm not minimizing how bad things were things were rough and still rough for a lot of people i know so many stories of like the phoenix that rose from the ashes type of stories that came out of covid where people made those decisions they said no no more i don't have to this has shown me that it's not necessary i can overcome that fear that i've had of making that decision prior to now mm -hmm. 
and I'm going to pursue my dream. And if I'm happy at my company and I don't want to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to pursue a position that's more suitable for my lifestyle. And I don't have to force my lifestyle to fit into the constraints of this company. And I'm willing to walk away. I have walk away power, you know, Mm -hmm. everybody from the fast food worker to the C-suite individual. That thought process has been common across the board with people around the world saying no no more well when you're when you're in a you're in a place where you're working at a company that yeah it's paying the bills and you get good or or great benefits out of it but you're going home shaking your head in the car on the commute all the time because you're just not joyful and happy when you don't make the decision to go find a place where that could be for yourself you're in essence Mm -hmm. giving control over to somebody else to someone else yeah to somebody else, right? So, you know, what's happening in the Great Resignation is people are, are taking that control it's back right. to themselves yes. in, in their heart and brain and saying, I'm going to do the legwork, I'm going to do the difficult work of finding a better place, whether it be same job at a different company with a better culture or to being an entrepreneur. I think entrepreneurship increased like 30%. Yeah. In the great resignation of, yeah. of people going out there and chasing their dreams with their own with their own business. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not in that because it happened before the pandemic started. It was for other reasons <laughs> that I went into entre- entrepreneurship. But I think it's always a great thing when people take over control of their life yes. and truly, truly live. I'm the CEO of my life kind of mindset and mentality and go after what they think is going to truly it. bring them. I love it. Joy and happiness. And that's what that's what gets me out of bed in the morning, plant the feet on the floor and do what I do is to help people along that part of their journey to find that for themselves. I love it. You know, the more stories that I hear and see, you know, coming to the knowledge of people taking that ownership back, Mm -hmm. it just makes me smile more and more because I live. My philosophy is this. I want to be I am the author of my story. Mm -hmm. I'm the author of my story. So whether I succeed or whether I fail on my terms, according to my definition, not someone else's. That's that's on me versus me continually giving, 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 giving. And then because of budgets or whatever the case may be, I go in and I no longer have a job. You just wrote my story for me and you mm-hmm. gave me the bare minimum notice, legally allowable and sometimes not legally allowable. And yo, by the way, I'm just about to, you know, take a big poop on your life right here. You don't have a job. Hope you did what you needed to do prior to today to be okay until you sort yourself out. Mm-hmm. No, I want to be the author of my story. And I really love the fact that so many people around the world have stepped into that and wanting to be the authors of their story. When, lose, or draw, it's on me. And uh, personally, as an entrepreneur, I think that's the best place to be. And oh, by the way, that then allows you to go pick and choose people that you want to have stand right next to you yes. as teammates, yes. okay? This is my why in life. We're, hello, hello, where are all the people to have this why in life um, i'm interested in you i want i want you to stand next to me and together we can work on things you know to bring some value to the world right yes right when you have that ownership the, the the analogy i use is you're climbing a mountain when you're dealing with your why how what and you're being introspective you're climbing your mountain and when you found it you're at the top of the mountain and you can take a light that's labeled what your why mm-hmm. and hold it up to the world and say i'm here and here's my why and anybody else here got this why can you bring your mountain over next to mine and together we're going to work together as a team with a much brighter light yes. that has this Y across it deliver even more value to to the a- world absolutely to the world absolutely that produces such a great inner joy mm-hmm. like you said i when you get up in the morning you're excited about this when you go to sleep at night i'm excited about this and working harder than i've ever worked before in my life as an entrepreneur but the joy is so the joy is there not Mm -hmm. "Eh, i gotta do it but oh i want to do this (laughs) i need to do this you know i'm pursuing this purpose with a passion and like you said, and I'm connected with so many wonderful people that are doing the same. Back to what we're saying, that, that joy in the journey. You know, we have that joy in this journey called life. Wow. Well, Indy, it has been such an amazing conversation today that we've mm-hmm. had. <laughs> I mean, it's like a couple twists and turns there for a minute, but we've had a really great conversation. What I'd like for you to do, please um, let our listeners know what you have new coming out. How can they reach you? 
um, and leave us with one final thought. Uh, so I'm on all, all the, so first of all, my company name is Generate Your Value. So I'm out on the major platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm also out there personally. You can find me. Um, I also have a podcast. I'm close to finishing season two with a co-host, a gentleman who's a business owner. So we have this coach business owner kind of dynamic. And we talk about life and leadership and business concepts. And so you can access that through my website, www.generateyourvalue.com, or I'm out, or we're out on all the major podcast platforms. And uh, there's a lot of nuggets out there. We're getting more into um, interview mode, interviewing folks as opposed to lay laying some ideas down on the table for people <laughs> to consider for their own for their own lives. And as a last final thought, uh, I think I'm going to go with personal brand. Yeah. Just to sort of sum up everything we talked about is, you know, brand, brand is about the trust level and experience that you have with a company. And you know, when mm -hmm. people say, well, they're a strong brand, well, it's because they people had a great experience, either with great products or services they got from the company or advertisements or something through an experience that they had a great experience with and a lot of trust level. I expect this company, if the, the product got destroyed en route to my place, that I can call them up and they'll ship out a new a new one, you know, to replace it. Because uh, what's important is the experience with you and support their brand kind of thing. So it's the same thing with you. How are you generating value? What is kind of experience are people having with you, whether it's your closest friend, your spouse, down to somebody you just met in the store that dropped something and you help them pick them up and sort of get the, get their stuff back together again. So how is your brand and how is that brand delivering value, generating value in the world that enables a great experience level and trust level with those that you interact with, whether it's for two minutes or 20 years from that perspective? Because we all, whether you believe it or not, or know it, you have a personal brand yes. just because you're living a life, yes. a human being life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Listen, um, leave us the, your website uh, information, if you will. And in the show notes, people will have the website links, his social media mm -hmm. links as well. Are there any new courses or speaking events that you have coming out soon? Not, not at the moment. Uh, I have four workshops that I do, but I do them at the moment sort of as an as needed basis. If I get enough interest in a uh, one of my workshops, then I'll throw a date out there and offer it up to folks. Okay. Well, guys, listen, Andy, again, it's been absolutely amazing having you here. If you want to know more about him, go out to his website at www.generateyourvalue.com. If you Google Andy McDowell, you should be able to find all of his relevant social media handles or Google the name of his company, his relevant social media handles. Connect with him on social media, mm -hmm. um, on LinkedIn. I know I'm really active on LinkedIn and I know that Andy's on LinkedIn as well. So uh, LinkedIn community, tap in and let's, um, let's support what Andy is doing and check out his workshops. And I know that there's something there that can add value to yeah. your life and to your business as well. So, until yeah, next so time, drop me drop me a note on social media. Tell me what your definition of success is or what your definition of leader. Some of the topics we talked about today, Yeah, it's all about sharing because the life is so complex. There's not one perfect and you can fit into a sentence, <laughs> right? It's going to be slightly different for everybody. So drop me a note. Get engaged. Yes, absolutely. Let us hear from you. Let us hear from you. We want to know what your thoughts are and we want to know the why behind those thoughts as well. So listen, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Laquita's Toolbox. I am your host, Laquita Monley. Listen, if you have loved this episode, I like to hear from you. Uh, take this opportunity to go on to your favorite podcast listening platform, like, follow, subscribe, share, leave us a comment. I want to know what you think about the tools that, that you're learning on Laquita's Toolbox. Are those tools bringing value to your life? And if they're not bringing value to your life, I want to know that as well. What are some of the things that you say, hey, Laquita, look, you're talking about some all right stuff, but I want to know about A, B, C, and D. I want to hear from you to know about what topics it is or what tools that you'd like to us to add to the toolbox. So I want to hear from you. Your comments are valuable. They're meaningful to me. Until next time, I'm your host, Laquita Mama. You guys take care and have a blessed day.